In this video, we're going to create the uh, Java Key Store that uh, WebSRMQ uses. Now, um, there is no GS Kit if you're using the client. I wanted to demonstrate this with a uh, plain client. So I've installed MS0T, which is the uh, WebSRMQ Explorer. And it does come with Key Tool, but it does not come with GS Kit. And Key Tool lives in the JRE bin directory. So there's uh, Key Tool. And uh, now that we've found it, we're just going to go ahead and copy this directory. And we're going to open up a command window in the uh, install directory for MQ Explorer. And then we're going to go ahead and add the uh, JRE bin to our path so that we can uh, find key tool easily. So as in the previous video, if you uh, just type in key tool, you're going to get a list of all the different um, possible options. And uh, this is the uh, Java standard that is supplied with um, uh, the Java, you know, the standard distribution of Java. So we're going to generate keys. And as before, we're going to be, uh, want to be able to list the certificates that are in the key store and list the details of those certificates. So I type in key tool, and then uh, I'm going to generate a key. We've got to tell it what alias we want to use. Now, um, there have been some conflicting standards as to whether you needed to use IBM WebSphere MQ and then the ID of the user. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that um, because we know it's compatible. It's not necessarily a requirement, but it won't hurt. I'm going to specify the key algorithm and the signature algorithm so that we make sure that we use one of those nice uh, SHA-2 family of uh, signatures. And we have to specify the distinguished name, same as before. So again, um, a commercial CA will take uh, either a domain name or it'll take an email address as the common name. And so I've begun using those two things, even in self-signed certificates, just so that people get used to seeing that. Now we're going to use three OUs like we did before, and the position of these is important. So here we're going to specify the OU is a human user, that person is in the IT Ops Department, and that person is an admin. And then we're going to put in the same organizational fields that we did in the uh, last key. Again, if you're doing a CERT request instead of a self-signed CERT, the uh, CA will insist that these match your um, published public domain name. Now since I've got my uh, email address as the uh, common name, I'm not going to put it also in the email field of the key store. I'm going to stick it in a file called tyatt.jks and we're going to specify that it is in fact a JKS. There's a, a few different options we can specify here. And we can specify the store pass and the key pass. Now, um, please do not use password with an O. <laughs> I wanted something that I could type, but what you would put here would be a password that you would use uh, something nice and strong, passphrase, it can have embedded spaces if you quote it and so forth. Validity period on user certificates is typically one year because users are a volatile population, their laptops leave the uh, uh, secure work area, um, and so we want to make sure that these certificates are not long-lasting certificates. One year is the longest that any compliance regime would allow. So if you've got to worry about HIPAA, FIPS, PCI, uh, you're never going to have longer than a one-year certificate for a user. Key size 2048, smallest you want to use. 4096 would be better. So now that we've created that JKS, let's go ahead and list the certificates that are in there. I'm going to cheat and do a little cut and paste here. Is the uh, problem with that dash stashed? Ah, see, I specified the key pass and not the store pass. I should have said store pass there. 
But since we don't have dash stash, there's this tendency to use a very small key that's easy to type. So there's our key store. There's one entry. It's the one that we just created. You see the alias, and the key tool gives you a little bit of detail. If you do the same command with a dash V for um, verbose, uh, you get a little bit more detail. But let's go ahead and specify the alias itself so that we're just going to list the one certificate. And this time we're going to use the uh, store pass instead. Of, well, I think I used key pass again. Let's just go grab the store pass. Since we're just listing the public uh, certificate, there's no reason to list the uh, key pass, but it doesn't hurt. And do the same command with the dash V, and there's all the details of our fingerprint. Uh, chain length 1 is about equivalent to CA equals false. Chain length 1 says in a certificate chain, uh, you can never have more than one certificate, so this can't sign anything else. Uh, there's our validity dates, and uh, there's the uh, fingerprint. Now the next thing we have to do, since these are self-signed, we've got to get this certificate to the key manager. So let's go ahead and export the uh, public key. And got to give it the uh, key store name. Got to tell it which key, even though there's only one. And we got to give it the uh, store pass. Uh, well. Okay, one more time. Apparently I got a stuck escape key or something here. Okay, so there we go. Give it the store pass, the alias name, tell it to extract it, and then we have to tell it what file to put that uh, certificate into. Again, we're using the common name. In this case, it's the user ID. That dash RFC at the end, that's what makes it export it as an ASCII uh, key that uh, GSKit can understand. So there we go, we've stuck it into the ty.arm, and then if we list that out, that's our actual key. Now the next thing will be to get uh, Explorer set up to use this key store that we just created. Come with us to the next video, and uh, we'll show you that.